Hello everyone, this is Dr. Elena Eustache. Welcome to my show. Today my guest is actress, producer, director Marlene Forti. Thank you so much for being here, Marlene. It's such a pleasure. Oh my God, thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> your fans have been asking me to go a little bit aside your career, more intimate, to learn more about you. So okay. I finally find you. Thank you, I had a moment, I'm here. <laughs> so Marlene, tell us how did you became an actress and when did you decide to become an actress and how did you know? Well, I knew at the age of 10 that I wanted to be an actress. I remember very clearly in my grammar school uh, being on stage in my little grammar school on stage and I didn't even have lines but I <laughs> sat there and I remember I'm in you know the first time I looked out into the audience and I could see the shadows of the heads and I just thought oh my god I'm home since the age of 10 I wanted to be an actor it took me 20 years to get to it Wow, but you never give up? I didn't give up, I didn't give up. I, I had, I was the first uh, oldest of an immigrant family, so I wanted to make my parents happy. So yeah. I went to school and I studied English literature, which was the closest I could get to acting. Because yes. I did a lot of Shakespeare. <laughs> they didn't know what I was doing. And then you they want, no, I had a plan. And then they wanted me to go to law school, like good immigrants, you know, your parents yes. wanted you to go to law school or med school, and that didn't happen. But I got really lucky because I landed into Labyrinth Theatre Company, which was the Latinos actors base at the time. Uh -huh. And I learned from Philip Seymour Hoffman and Sam Rockwell and John Ortiz and Judy Reyes, and oh, these are my, my friends. God, these are the amazing. people that, I, yeah, these are the people that I learned from. So I got lucky. You have to have a lot of drive and a little bit of luck. A lot of luck. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of drive too. Yeah, both. <laughs> and discipline. Yeah. So, what are you working on right now? Tell us a little bit. Well, what can we see on? Oh, uh, I mean, I don't know when it happened, but I have 21 years in this business now, and um, I'm currently working on ABC Family's The Foster. Uh -huh. I'm really happy to be to be working on this show right now. The cast is amazing. Uh, we're coming back um, for season. Now the end of season three. Why would she let that happen? She did a lot of bad things. I'm blessed. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I, Dallas was a, a fantastic ride, and I'm still ouching a little bit. I know you guys are missing Dallas too. We are. But my, <laughs> my mom's favorite show. She knows know. every episode. If it is any consolation, we're missing it too. You don't need to tell me more. If Cliff Barnes is involved, this is about destroying the Ewings. And I will not be part of that. Mom, please. Go! I have to get back to my work. We all do. Uh, <laughs> I know, I know. And and what a, a, tr a dream for me to, to work with. You know, I dream of Jeannie's Larry Hagman, yeah. which I w watched growing up. And yeah. now I was in a, in a scene with him, which was amazing. And Patrick Duffy and, and Brenda Strong and Jesse Metcalf is a sweetie. And I was just, you know, Jordana Brewster. I mean, I've... I have a joke that I have played mom to some very, very important women on TV. Yes. Um, Carrie Washington. Yes. I, I played in a early, early on one of Carrie's first, first movies where I, uh, I was in an interracial relationship. I played her mom. Oh, um, I love her. Oh my God, she's yeah, amazing, amazing in this movie. It's a Jim McKay movie uh, called Our Song, which is still mine and Carrie Washington's favorite oh. song, movie that we've ever worked on. And then Jordana Brewster, and you know, I mean, Amy Garcia, and I mean, I've had, uh, I've been blessed to work with some really nice um, uh, women. And now I have granddaughters like Sierra Ramirez, who's another little powerhouse on the Fosters. <laughs> Marlene, I'm feeling exhausted looking at your resume. I don't understand how do you manage your business life and your personal life? Well, it took me three marriages to get <laughs> fully married. That's, um, to kiss a lot of toads uh -huh. and and let me just say that even though I had three marriages and thirds a charm yes um, the other two men in my life um, are are wonderful men mm -hmm. and they just didn't they weren't for me um, yeah. I have a one my best production to date Giselle uh, Rodriguez is my daughter mm -hmm. and that's I know that that's why he was in my life yeah and then my second um, a marriage prepared me to be in a really healthy relationship with my husband. So I, I like to say that nothing was lost. Amazing. Um, which is also a, a really w a wonderful way for an actor to think. Yeah. You know, because I started for all intents and purposes late in this career. You yes. know, I was in my late 20s by the time I started this and people were like, what are you crazy? People are, women are retiring in their late 20s in this yes. business. <laughs> um, 
but I just had a, I just knew that this is what I was meant to do and, and I just knew you know I heard Madonna once say um, you have to have a secret mm -hmm. to, to make it and that was my secret it's just that it didn't matter how many times people said no or you're too short or you're too this or you're too heavy or you're too old I was just like okay so you didn't take no for it's an answer. Okay. No. <laughs> no just means not now. Yeah. <laughs> my, my, my dad told me the, exactly the same thing. No, no one knows means, nothing. That's right. Not now. Not right now. But um, wonderful. Yeah. Uh, what would be towards you if I ask you like what are the three ingredients of passion to you? Laughter. Um, you have to laugh in yeah. this world because we are not curing brain surgery <laughs> you know it's just finding the right combination where you can have respect and laughter and trust so what is your definition of love well there's a lot of different types of love you know mm -hmm. I love my career yes I love my daughter I love my husband mm -hmm. uh, in a relationship again just a lot of trust mm -hmm. you need a lot of trust in this business what gets you up in the morning what makes you wake up and go Hmm, I want to do this. You know, this is what I want to do. This is what gets me up at 7:30 in the morning and not like. And doesn't feel like work. It's yeah. your passion. Yeah, I can be 18 hours on a set and oh. I love it. And I, by the way, acting is free. We get paid to wait. <laughs> <laughs> so, if there would be three things you would want to know about man that you don't understand or is a mystery for oh. you, let me tell you. <laughs> three times I've been married, right? And I have a very brilliant man that I'm married to now. But men cannot multitask. Because they have only three areas in their brain. One is work, one is fun, and one is nothing. And they can switch one to the other. They There's only a lot say, of air. <laughs> yeah. you know how when they watch TV and they switch channels yes. and you ask them what you're doing and they say nothing. Nothing. They really doing nothing because they are in nothing. So they're in their nothing land. Yeah, nothing land. So you have to make an appointment and switch from one side of the brain to the other because they can't switch like women. They need like I, half an hour to rewire. That's right. You have to hard drive them. Yeah. That's the problem. Okay. Why can't men take out the garbage? Because they don't like to be told what to do and they are again in their zone of doing something so you have to make an appointment and said honey I understand you're busy but when today can you take the garbage out it will make me feel good. Okay why do men need affirmation from other women because they are always in competing mode between each other and putting each other down and joking so they need affirmation more than women because they don't get compliments oh my gosh she has all the answers <laughs> why can't men do the laundry because it's not a masculine activity and unless you ask them for help they're not gonna do it because that's not something that they normally do they fix things they repair things they want to help you but you have to ask for help it's feminine okay I know biologically why they don't give birth but really why do you think God didn't let them give birth because they can't stand the pain we can't take <laughs> <laughs> that I say all the time. Yeah. If you gave birth, we'd be extinct. <laughs> it was such a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you so much. Oh, and we God. look forward to see you on many, many screens and many Oh, and theater, theater. I will say really yes. quickly, um, this fall at the Getty Villa, in September 11th, I am doing an adaptation. Yeah, oh. up at the Getty Villa, we're doing an adaptation of Medea. Mm -hmm. I play Armida, a very, very, very evil, evil woman, and it's a beautiful play that's uh, ad adapted for modern times. It takes place in Boyle Heights, mm -hmm. and I play a Latina white developer oh. who takes a lot of Latina. advantage <laughs> of her people. Come see me. Oh, welcome to you. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. It was oh such God. a pleasure and so much fun. Thank you Thank so you much for having Thank me. You. You're a doll. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh.